Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Ham Radio Dude, and I was just advised there's a firmware update for the new Yaesu FTDX10. I figured we would take a look at what the firmware update does and fixes, and then go ahead and learn how to update our radio together. Let's get started. This is Ham Radio Dude. In the description below, I'll provide a link to the Yaesu website for the file section of the FTDX10. And here we could see a couple of things on the bottom of the screen. We could see that there's a FTDX 10 firmware update information and the actual FTDX 10 firmware update itself. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on the FTDX 10 firmware update and it should download a zip file onto your computer. And the next thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and click on this FTDX 10 firmware update information to see what this does. Here I've opened the PDF for the FTDX 10 firmware update information. And it does give a link here for the actual download of the firmware, as well as telling us what is provided in that zip file we just downloaded. And now here are the features that this implements or the firmware update fixes. Fixed a bug in the SD card cannot be read when the network remote control system or the LAN unit SCU LAN 10 is connected. Fixed a bug that the frequency is set by fix of the scope function is not reflected while receiving VFOB in remote operation using the network remote control system. Fixed a bug, inaccurate readout of the power meter operation in the 24 megahertz band while operating at 100 watts. Well, this is really good because this was one of the things that I thought I was going to have to send my radio into Yesu to get fixed, but it looks like they fixed it in a firmware update. Uh, if you didn't know, if you're on 12 meters and your radio is showing 150 watts, you're going to need this update. Your radio is not actually doing 150 watts. It's just showing 150 watts. It's not calibrated correctly. And then number four, the initial value of the scope level has been optimized. So now it goes on to tell us how we're gonna go ahead and get this firmware downloaded and installed, which I'll show you right now. When you download the Yezu firmware update, it's probably gonna go in your downloads folder, wherever that might be. Mine happens to be my desktop. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the file which is compressed or zipped. I'm using a program called WinRAR to unzip it, but you could use a standard Windows program to do this as well. All I have to do is I have to either right click and extract the files, or I could double click to open the w WinRAR program and I could extract each of these files individually. Once I finish doing that, uh, I should get a folder here that pops up and shows me the FTDX10 firmware update 2021-0121. And you can see here are all the files. And so the next thing that we're going to need to do is format our memory card and get our memory card ready for the firmware update. If you haven't yet put an SD card into your radio to update it, I have made other videos to do so, but I will tell you briefly how to do it again. You need to find an SD card. And I found that 32 gigabyte or less cards tend to work the best. Uh, I'm happening to use a class 10 PNY technology elite. It's a 16 gigabyte card and I'm going to put it into the SD card reader. And when I do so, what's going to happen is you're going to see a pop-up that says setup and I'm going to hit yes. At this point, we get to the SD card menu. Under the SD card menu, there's a lot of information here, but the most important thing is, is we need to find the format button by paging down and then clicking done next to format. It's going to say, do you want to format the SD card? And I'm going to click okay. The format will take just a moment. Now that we have the SD card plugged into the computer, I have two folders opened up. The first folder I have opened up is the actual SD card and you'll see an FTDX10 folder, which I'm gonna go ahead and open up now. The next thing that we're gonna see is the folder that we need to open up and it's gonna be the one that we extracted the FTDX10 firmware to. Again, mine happens to be FTDX10 firmware and I extracted it to my desktop. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all these files and I want to copy these files directly to the FTDX10 folder. So again, here's the FTDX10 folder. I'm going to open it up and I'm going to drag and drop them over here. If you haven't already gone back to the main menu, go ahead and do so now like I am. And then you're going to go ahead and plug in your SD card and you're going to get this option again to set up. Go ahead and click yes. And then go down to firmware update and click done. Right now, what you see is file checking or essentially it's trying to see what files are on the drive and what files can be updated off of the drive. You could see that a couple of things did pop up for the main and the display. 
So I'm going to click update now. And it asked me, do you wish to update? And I'll click OK. Here you can see the process of the actual firmware update occurring, which I think is pretty cool that my external monitor still works while the firmware is updating. Once the firmware is done upgrading, you should see the radio reboot, the Yezu splash screen, and then it'll bring you back to the main menu just like this. The whole process took me less than about two minutes. Now what you're going to want to do from the main menu is confirm that the firmware was updated. On your physical radio, there's a function button, which if you tap the function button, you'll get into the function menu. From the function menu, go ahead and click on extension settings on the bottom of the screen. This brings us back to the extension setting options where we can click on soft version. Under soft version, we can see that the main is showing version 01-04. The display is showing version 1 or 01-02. And from here, we can now go click on SD card and we can click firmware update one more time. If we do that, it basically checks to make sure that the firmware was all updated correctly and there's nothing left to upgrade. You can see on my screen that the firmware update button is grayed out, but I will make a note that on the built-in screen to the ASU FTDX10, the, the button's not grayed out, you just can't click it. So go ahead here and click cancel. And that's all it is to upgrade the firmware to your ASU FTDX10. One final thing I am going to do is I'm going to test that 12 meter error or that 12 meter issue I was having where it was showing 150 watts when it really was only 100 watts. Let's do that now. I'm now on the frequency for FT8. And what used to happen was even with a dummy load, if I were to key up on FM or AM or do FT8 and tune up, I would show 150 watts. So let's see if that has changed. Very good. It looks like Yezu solved the issue, and I'd like to thank Yezu for a very quick response to fix this firmware. I also would like to thank you for watching this video. I do hope it helped you out, and I hope you get this firmware updated correctly. If you should have any issues, please feel free to leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I'm Ham Radio Dude. Until next time, 73.